Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Now in this video, we're gonna be going over how to generate and process JSON responses. So in our previous videos, we've already set up this application which provides car recommendations to a user based on the car requirements that they enter here. So when they click submit, they're provided with this response from OpenAI's API which tailors a variety of car options to what they have provided. Now, as you can see with this output, it is working as we expect. The only thing is we are receiving this information as one large piece of text. So all of this information is just being displayed as a text object on Bubble. What we actually want to be able to do is to pass this information individually and save it to the database. So for example, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to save this as car option one and then save this as car option two, et cetera, for the rest of the list. But because it's being provided to me in a text format, I can't actually easily separate out each of these car options. So how do we actually do that? There are two things that we actually need to do to get that JSON response format. The first thing that we need to do is we can actually add in a parameter to our API call to let OpenAI know the format in which we need to receive this information. So if I go over to my API docs over here, we have this particular parameter called response format. And what this does is it specifies the format that the model must provide the output in. So if we set this one to type JSON object like here, it enables JSON mode, which just guarantees the message the model generates is in valid JSON format. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy this one and I'll go to our plugin over here, which is the API connector. And I'll drop this one in, I'll tab it into place, the quotation marks, put a colon, press space. Then I will jump back over to here. And it says that this needs to be set to type JSON object, enable the JSON mode and guarantees the message in the model generates is valid JSON. So we'll jump back to here and I will pop that and I'll pop a comma after it as well. The next thing that I need to do is it states here, important, when using the JSON mode, you must also instruct the model to produce JSON yourself via system or user message. Without this, it might generate an under ending stream of white space. So what that means is that in my prompt itself, I need to write, please provide me the information in a JSON format. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, please provide me the information in a JSON array called car and then I'll put underscore options. And what I might also do is because it's going to give me the details, I'm going to put underscores just all throughout here so that's for all the spacings and then what I will also do so I'll just copy this one and I'll jump back to my data tab app data I'll go to all prompts and I'll just update this prompt with this new information so I've entered my car requirements again and I've received these car options and I can see I've received it in a JSON object of car options. However, it's still displaying as text on my page. And the reason why it is displaying as text on my page is because I have a JSON object within a JSON object. So what I've done is we receive an entire JSON object as a response from our OpenAI API call. And then within that JSON object, we have this array as well. And Bubble is reading this array as a text. So to give you an example, we have our call that we've set up here. 
And when we initialize this call and if I click on manually enter response, I can see the response that we receive. We receive this content over here and within this content field, we receive the response of hello, how can I help you today? And the reason why we receive that response is because our question is just hello. So it isn't our entire prompt that we are sending through at the moment. But what is important to note is that our response to the OpenAI API call is being saved next to content over here. So our JSON object that is being returned is being saved here. So when I click save, I can see that this message content is being read by Bubble as a piece of text. And I can't actually choose an option to make this be read as JSON itself. So what I need to do is we connect to Bubble's own API to reformat this text into a JSON format. So we use a bit of a workaround. So what we do is I need to think of a workaround to allow me to actually process this information as a JSON object. So then I can save the pieces of information to my database or display it in a slightly different way. So how are we going to do that? We add a header to make it into a JSON. So let's go about the process of setting this one up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my backend workflow. And what I want to create is I want to create a backend workflow to take this input of text in and return it in a JSON format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go new API workflow and this API workflow is going to be exposed as a public API workflow and I'm going to be calling it convert JSON and it's going to take in one parameter which is input of type text and then we're going to immediately return data from the API and we're going to click other content type here and what I'm going to write at the top here is application slash JSON. So that's just the header, which is telling Bubble that this is going to be provided in a JSON format. So I'm going to put the input as input, which is that text input. And then because I have this application slash JSON, what is going to happen is Bubble is going to understand that it's receiving information in a JSON format rather than a text format. Now what we need to do is we need to create an API call to connect to this convert JSON endpoint. So I'll add another call which I will call convert JSON. I will make it a post and I'm going to add two headers and the headers I'm going to add is first content type and it's going to be application JSON and then the other one I need to do is authorization and it's going to be bearer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings I'm going to go to API and we have our API tokens I'm going to create an API token specific to this one and then I'm going to copy that and if I go back to my plugin I'll pop that one in there. Now I need to connect to the correct endpoint so I'm going to go back to here and I'm just going to copy this root URL over here and I'm going to pop it in there then I'll pop a slash and if I go to here called this one convert JSON. So I'll copy that and I'll go back to my plugin and I'll just pop it in. Now what I need to do is I need to add in the information that I'm actually going to be sending here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this and then go quotation mark and I called the parameter input. So I'll pop in input here and then I'll put a colon and then what I want to do is I want to pop in another quotation mark and I want to pop in a dynamic value over here. And the reason why I am doing that is I want to be able to dynamically provide the 
text that I have, which is that array, and then provide it in here. Now, to initialize this call, what I actually need to do is I need to be providing it with a similar value to what it is expected to be provided in this API call. So if I jump over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna copy this one and I'm going to pop it in here, but this actually won't work. And the reason why it won't work is I haven't escaped the JSON as we discussed in our previous video. If you have special characters, you need to escape the JSON or make it formatted as JSON safe. Because we're in the editor, we can't actually use the bubble native formatting which supports that. But what I can just do is I can just Google escape JSON and I can just use a tool which just does it for me very quickly and easily. And I'll just go escape JSON. I'll copy this one. I'll jump back over here and I'll pop that in. I'll initialize my call and I can see the information is coming through correctly. So I have my raw data over here. And then when I look at it, every single option and every single specific one has its own field associated with it. So I can save that one and it is working as expected. Something I do want to add is we should add a underscore to our dynamic values. It's just best practice and it can clear the value here. So I just provide that again and I just wanna uncheck this private box. So what we need to do now is we need to actually just update our workflows and update our information on the page to make sure that we're displaying it correctly and to run this API workflow where we are able to take this input of JSON as a text and then convert it to a JSON format that we can really nicely display and then choose to save to the database as well. So let's go over the process of setting this one up. So what I want to do first is I actually want to, I'll delete this one and then I want to change this or replace this element type with a repeating group. And what I will do is I will uncheck this one which sets a fixed number of rows and I'll change the type of content to be convert JSON car option. What I would like to do now is I will just change that to repeating group and I will just start adding in some visual elements here. So the first thing that I wanna do is I want to actually just reference current cells convert JSON car option. And what I can do now is I can reference all of these data fields. So I want to have the car model as the first one. And one of the valuable things of being able to reference each data field is I can add in different formatting options. So for the car model, I actually just want it to be bold. And then what I'll do is I'll close that and I'll duplicate this one. And I'll make this one to be the pros, but I might have to clear the expression and I'll go pros and then I'll go pros. So then I can have the pros underneath it. I'll unbold that. I'll duplicate that with command D or control D and then I'll go cons again. So now I have this one set up. What I now need to do is I need to add it to my workflow. But before I do that, what I did realize I have done is if I just collapse this one, I've actually created a convert JSON call within my open AI API. So that doesn't create any issues right now, but it's just not best practice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna recreate this call in a separate container. So I've set this new one up now and I've deleted the extra call that we had here. So what I need to do is I need to change from this missing type to convert JSON car option and then just reset 
these ones. Change this one to a con as well. And I need to add it to my workflow. So when button submit is clicked, what I want to do is I don't want to display data is I actually want to display a list in a repeating group and I want to take, let me clear that. I want to get data from an external API. So it says it's from an external API, but it's actually from the API, which is connecting to our own bubble app. The reason why it says external API is just because bubble doesn't realize that we're connecting to our own app it can provide that information. And what I want to do is I want to grab the output of our open AI API call and provide this one here. So that's that one. And then I'll pop in car options. So let's test this out. So go back to here. I have all this filled out already and I'll click submit. So we just had an error and a reason for that error is because I made a mistake here, which is when we do this trigger AI workflows, we get an output and the output here needs to be formatted as JSON safe. So we need to make sure that we're escaping all those characters. And additionally, when we get an output of formatted as JSON safe, it already provides us with quotation marks at the edges of that. So that means over here, I need to delete these quotation marks. So if I try this one again and we click submit, we can now see it is working as expected. So this is how we can generate and process a JSON response. This allows us with a lot more flexibility in terms of how we want to display these output. And we can also create even more fields if that is what we require. Additionally, what we can do is we can save this particular information in our database. And it's much more useful for us to actually use, save, manipulate this information versus just being provided to us as a long block of text.